Right. Right, who can I pick on tonight? John Williams. Can you unmute yourself and open in prayer, please? Yeah, I'll just... Don't give me that. Okay, folks, let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity this evening just to meet together for a short time and to to listen to your word. And we pray that as we do so, it would be a blessing to our hearts and encouragement to our souls, uh, and maybe a challenge too, um, as we seek to live for you. Lord, we pray that you would help us as we um, take this word to our hearts, help us to live by it, uh, and to be more like you day by day in, in the way we live, in the things we do, and the things we say. Lord, we pray that you would help us as we meet together for prayer, Lord, that um, as we as we do that and as we come before you, Lord, you would be pleased to hear our prayers and to answer our prayers, Lord, in accordance with your will. So we thank you for each uh, each family here, each person gathered in your name, and we pray your blessing upon us tonight. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Apologies for, for our house phone going off then. <laughs> um. Well, it was. Oh, hang on. It was uh, it was good the weekend, wasn't it? Well, I thought so. I think the uh, the carol service with the kids in the morning, well, the carol service in the evening, and the kids in the morning, uh, it was a real, real blessing. A lot better than I expected. You know what was a real blessing was was those shepherds, <laughs> those shepherds who've definitely uh, they've won the Bethel Broadcasting Company Drama Award of the Year. I think we'll have an award ceremony. When we get to the end of these videos and all the broadcasting we've been doing, I think, you know, they'll definitely get one of the Oscars for uh, for that performance. So well done to the two shepherds who are there. Yeah, big thumb, thumbs up. Well, funnily enough, when, when Brian and Sue were, were shepherding on video, I, I just thought of, I just thought of a, a passage um, that I always go to and, and I've preached on a few times over the years. In fact, it's this was the very first sermon that I ever preached from from this passage. So if you've got your Bibles uh, with you, then we're going to go to John chapter 10. We're going to look at the good shepherd tonight. I was reminded by the shepherds to go to the good shepherd because the shepherds on the hillside of Bethlehem, they, they ultimately pointed us to the good shepherd. In, uh, in Bethlehem, didn't they? So we're going to be in John's Gospel in John chapter 10, where Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd. So let me read um, verse 11 through to 14, and then a little bit later on, I'm going to read verse 22 through to verse 30. So let me just read the bit where Jesus says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. So Jesus says he's the good shepherd. And my sheep, they know me. He is the shepherd of a people who hear his voice. And you know, we just flip over the page to verse 27, which is where, where we're going to camp in a minute. But I'll read the whole section in a moment or two. But in verse 27, he says this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. See, Jesus, in uh, the latter half of, of chapter 10, we find him at the Feast of Dedication. We find him um, walking in the temple courts, and as always, he would have been surrounded by people. But some of those people, in fact, probably the vast majority of those people, they didn't they didn't believe that he was who he said he was. Um, some of them even, if you read verses 19 to 21, some of them even thought that he was demon-possessed. You know, uh, And they challenged him. 
if you are the Christ, tell us plainly. So let me just read those other few verses. Um, just now I've set a little bit of a context. So verse, verse 22. At that time of the, the feast of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So Jesus had said, um, or rather they challenged him, hadn't they? If, if you're the Christ, then, then tell us plainly. And then Jesus responded, I did tell you. But he didn't believe. He didn't believe the works that I'd done. And how often do we hear that in the world where we say well look jesus has told us who he is but so many the vast majority just don't believe you know i guess a lot of those people who were gathered around jesus that day had had heard of his miracles had heard of the works that he'd done the works that he said proved that he was who he said he was you know many have probably heard about the fact that he you know just to pick a few of the miracles out that he that he'd walked on the water, that, that you know, he'd calmed the storm with a word of his mouth, that the water was turned into the wine, and the sick who were healed, the, the blind could, could see. And, you know, the, the, many would have heard about the five loaves and the, and, the, and the two fish, because there were thousands there when that happened. It was plain to see that Jesus was who he claimed to be. And yet, they couldn't see him. It was almost as if it was hidden in plain sight. They just couldn't see. But his sheep, and I trust that we're all his sheep tonight, his sheep could see, could hear, did understand. So back to that, back to verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me i give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand so my sheep hear my voice so if we're his tonight then we've heard we've heard his call you know jane my sister will be giving her testimony on christmas day and you'll hear that the Lord called her, and as a result of her call, she she dragged me into church, and I heard the call from the Word of God, and I believed that Jesus was the Good Shepherd of, of my soul. And you know, Steve Baker gave his testimony on, on Sunday night. He'd heard the call, "My sheep hear my voice." We've heard the call that He is the way, He is the truth. He is the life. We've heard the call that he is the, the light of, of the world. He is the bread of life. Uh, and his sheep know that they cannot live life apart from him. He is also, the, as he says, the resurrection and the life. He has the power over life and death. So his is the voice that we listen to. He is our authority. My sheep hear my voice but often and i often say this don't i that the voice of god can get crowded out it can get we can become so distracted maybe by the by the voice of doubt maybe by the voice of, of fanatical atheism that, that is all around us maybe by the voice of family and friends who who, who haven't heard the shepherd's call and and these voices bombard us all the time but ultimately, 
God's sheep, they come back to hear the voice, the voice of God. The voice of God as found in the word of God. And when we open the word of God, we hear the good shepherd speak. And we believe it. Why? Because my sheep hear my voice. And those who hear, those who hear understand the deeper things of God. And those who hear dwell secure. The proverb that I often read again is, if Proverb 1 verse 33, the last proverb in, in Proverbs chapter 1, where, he, where it says there, he who listens to me will dwell secure. The voices that we're hearing about COVID, they scare us, don't they? You know, we're afraid of our, for our families, we're afraid for ourselves to a certain extent. And there's, there's no security in listening to that, the voices that come through the television at the moment. It's where, where do we hear that calming um, balm, if you like? It's in the word of God. As the proverb says, he who listens to me will dwell secure. So no matter what life throws at us, no matter what COVID throws at us, those who listen to the voice of the shepherd will dwell secure. So my sheep, they listen to my voice. And then he says, and I know them. And to me, that's very consoling. The fact that the Lord saved me, even though he knows me. <laughs> the Lord saved me. The good shepherd saved me, even though he knew that I was a wandering sheep. And I still wander from time to time as well. And he, and he still calls me. He still knows me. And yet he saved me, you know. Psalm 139, I'll read it again for about the umpteenth time during lockdown. Oh Lord, you have searched me, says the psalmist, David. And you know me. You know when I sit and you know when I rise. You, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Oh Lord, so he knows us. And he is the only person who knows you fully. You know, some of you will have been married for a long time. Some people for a short time. Some people getting married, eh, Kemi and Oye? Um, and, you know, Kemi and Oye are getting to know each other even more. But, you know, even if you've been married for... I don't know, Brian said to me the other day, I think you've been married 42 years. Is that right, Brian? 42 years. And But there's probably, you know, Sue and, and Brian, they don't know each other's minds always. They can second guess it, but they don't know the mind of each other like Jesus knows the mind. He knows us thoroughly. And yet he still loves us. And that's amazing to me. So when he messes, when we mess up, he knows. Yeah, but he still comes after you because he's the good shepherd, isn't he? A good shepherd goes after his sheep. He goes in search of his sheep and seeks to draw them back. So my sheep hear my voice and I know them and then they follow me. That's what we do. That's why we're here tonight, because we're following Jesus. That is our calling in life. We've heard his call and his instruction is, is to follow him. We follow him in the way he lived his life. We follow him in, in love. John 13, verses 34 and 35, where he said to his disciples, on, on the way to Jerusalem, he was teaching them many things. And, and there he said this to them, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, and you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So we follow him. We follow him in the way he lived. And we follow him in sacrificial love as well. Again, this is our call and this is who we are. And that sacrificial love is defined, I think, by one verse in, in Luke 9, verse 23, and he, where Jesus says, 
to all. If anyone would come after me, if anyone would follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. We follow in love and that love is sacrificial. You know, we know the story of, of Peter, don't we, in John 20, when, when Jesus, um, the risen saviour, it was John 21, I don't know off the top of my head. Anyway, Jesus, the risen saviour, had, had called out um, Peter from the crowd of the disciples and said, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes, you know I love you, Lord. Um, and then he says, well, they're going to take you to places you don't want to go and they're going to crucify you, is what he said to, to Peter. Yeah. But even there, follow me. I paraphrase that a lot, like, but that's the essence. You're going to have to deny yourself totally, Peter. But follow me. And that's the life of a follower of Christ. It's a life of self-denial. Because we are no longer, we are no longer serving ourselves. We're called by the shepherd to serve him. That's what defines us. So, my sheep, they hear my voice and they follow. Um, and I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. And this is the final thing for us to think about tonight. What a gift. You know, the good shepherd has come along, the good shepherd of our souls, and he's he's called us and we've responded, we've heard his voice and we've we've followed him, knowing that he knows us and, and knowing that he knows our sin and yet he calls us to him to follow him and, and look what he gives us. He, he, <laughs> We're not going to perish. We're not going to go to hell because the good shepherd has laid down his life for we, his sheep. You know, and he will lead us all the way to the gates of heaven. And there forever we will know eternal peace and eternal joy and eternal love. And in that place, one day we'll be free of sin we'll be free of pain, we'll be free of, of grief because of the greatest gift that could possibly ever be given to us. There is nothing compared to the gift that he has given us. Not one of you will perish because the Lord Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, laid down his life. And the assurance that he gives us here that no one, no one can take you out of my hand. No one. So if I, you are my sheep, no one is going to change that. No one. You're mine forever. And that's a, a tremendous assurance. Even when we're naughty sheep, <laughs> we're still in his hand. Even when we're wriggling and not behaving as we should, we're still in his hand because nobody can take us out of his hand and i just find that incredible it's grace isn't it it's grace it's it's undeserved favor so there are just a few thoughts about the good shepherd tonight so let me read the verses again to us um, my sheep they hear my voice and i know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. Let me just pray. Thank you, Lord, for those words of assurance. Thank you, O oh Lord, that you are the great shepherd of our souls. You are the one who leads us beside the still waters and the green pastures. You are the one as our shepherd who will lead us through the valley of the shadow of death one day. You are the one who will cause us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you, the good shepherd of our souls, came down from heaven to earth as we celebrate at this time of year. 
and that you shepherded the flock and that you continue to shepherd the flock and you continue to lead us in the way that we should go. So good shepherd of our souls, we give you thanks this night. We give you all of the praise and all of the glory. Would you strengthen us in the days ahead, in the days, these COVID days that we find ourselves in? Would you strengthen us to do your will, to follow after you, to love, O oh Lord, as you have loved us, and to pick up our cross daily. Strengthen us to be able to deny ourselves and to follow you. Lord, bless us, we pray, in this work that we do for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well,